Hi there guys, welcome back to my channel. So um, we're back again with a adult bedtime story and this week's story is called Clowns. So I hope you enjoy it. I will put a little disclaimer in this one. Um, there is a little bit of violence and um, threat. So if you're not in the mood for a thriller, then um, head back to my channel and have a wee look at the other videos, which are a little bit more relaxing if that's what you're looking for. Enjoy guys. It's late afternoon on a winding country road. I keep one eye on the tarmac as the road undulates ahead of me. The car floats up and down over the steep declines as I match my speed to the car in front. A tattered piece of paper flickers on the dashboard and I remember the words written on it. Red hatchback, no registration, come alone and wait for further instruction. Further instruction, I think. As long as the further instruction doesn't involve my demise, I'll be happy. Valentine's Day wouldn't be any fun if my partner didn't make this kind of effort. As he usually does. Although, I struggle to remember which of his friends owns this car. Must be new. Trundling along the surface of the road, I take note of the rolling hills to my right and thick, spiky brush piled high to my left. The road narrows ahead and my view becomes obscured by the darkness cast by several large oak trees above my head. Some of the branches reach down and scrape across the roof of the car. Foliage collects on the windscreen by the second and I wonder if being buried by woody offcasts would be a better way to go. I crane my neck down slightly and try to focus on the car as it rushes through the spiralling road. The grey sky turning black above, the hatchback slows down and turns up an opening to the left, painfully. I begin to wonder if I've been following someone's grandmother for the last half hour. I turn into the opening and I'm met with a paved road encased by an avenue of trees. Almost two stories high, they loom in front of me like an army, ready for their final salute. In amongst them, as I progress up the road, warm, cheerful lights peep through in the distance. They seem to be shining on an old farm cottage, nestled in amongst dark branches and bushes. The brick shines back at the lights, illuminating it, and I can see that it is made of the same stone that I am driving on. A cherry red door stands proudly at the front with a large golden knocker that is bigger than any I've encountered before. Small flower beds litter the front of the cottage, neat and deliberately placed. I admire their delicate petals. As I make it to the driveway and around a less than inspiring statue, the car in front pulls to a halt. I stop behind it and yank on the emergency brake body frozen. Suddenly, the reality of how far I drove hits me, and my breath begins to steam up the cold glass in the windows. Through the fog, I can roughly see the car's cab lights turn on and hear the release of the driver's side door. The driver, a man with a bald head wearing all black, emerges and closes the door behind him. He strolls leisurely over to the front door and wanders in leaving it wide open. I strain to look through the blackness inside and wait to see if anyone else emerges. They don't. After thinking through my choices that brought me here and taking a few breaths, I decide to go in. It's obviously some sort of surprise and I need to enter in order for it to begin. I jiggle open my door and jump out from the seat, closing the door and locking it behind me. As I step through the threshold and into the cottage, it remains dark. I can feel my every movement upsetting the silence inside. A breeze wafts over my face and brings the smell of the house with it. A mix of lavender and the distinct smell of care homes or lonely hospital wards creeps up my nostrils. Looking around, curious, I can see a cocktail of medication littering the countertops and a worn out armchair in the living area. Clearly the only piece of furniture that is used in this room. 
everything in disarray, I get the creeping feeling I'm in the wrong place. I go to reach into my back pocket to grab my phone, and as my finger reaches its cold edge, a hand braces my wrist. I try to turn, but my arm is twisted so tightly that a sharp pain pierces through my joints any time I move. Beads of sweat prick at my forehead, and I offer... Danny? The body behind me scoffs and lets out a sarcastic laugh. He slowly releases his grip on my arm, getting cocky in the presence of my fear. Straight ahead, I can see a curtain flapping in the breeze. Open window. I whip my arm forcefully away from his and run towards the window. As my hands reach the wooden frame, I start to push up the heavy panes and pass one of my legs through. I can hear heavy footsteps approaching on the timber floor and I slide my slender body through the opening onto a bed of thorn-covered bushes. I roll over and look back to see that my new acquaintance is struggling to get through the space I created in the window. Struggling up to standing, I turn on my heels and run as fast as possible. As I run, the ground underfoot changes from lush green grass to dust and sand laced with sharp pebbles. As I run away from the cottage, the sand-coloured dust flies up around me. My eyes dart from left to right and search for somewhere to hide. Ahead, all I see are leafless, dry, struggling trees. And then, nothing. My lungs are starting to burn and the underside of my tongue feels like when you taste metal. Looking over my shoulder, I notice white faces bouncing towards me. As they get closer, red noses and black diamond shapes on them become clearer and the outlines more defined. Clowns. Three, then four, emerge fully only ten metres away, their focus fixed on me. Stepping back on one foot, my heel meets the trunk of a tall, naked tree. I reach out and grab onto some failing branches and begin to hoist myself up. I drag my body up notch by notch and finally make it to the branch at the top where I can rest for a second. In the haze of dust below, I can see the masks looking up, eagerly, and swimming around the base of the tree like piranhas. I open my mouth, breathless. Goosebumps cover my arms, and like scales, they cause friction against my clothes. They talk amongst themselves below, and the words struggle to float up around me as they move just out of earshot. The mumbling ceases. Through the settling dust, I see a glowing light materialise, being brandished by one of the clown-cladded men below. It dances quickly from side to side, and the eclectic orange and reds reflect against the powder from the ground underneath. I realise they've been planning a barbecue. A crackling starts at the base of the tree and heat begins to wash over my cold, exposed skin, intensifying every second and fueled by the matter of the dry, desiccated tree. I can't jump, I can't climb down, so I wait. Bit by bit, I feel a lonesome structure betraying me as it crumbles and weakens. After a couple of minutes of waiting, I can feel the trunk begin to sway under my weight. The fire is slowly making its way up to my branch and I realise this is it. My little safe perch begins to crunch and crumble and the soles of my boots become red hot. I jump, willingly, into the billowing black cloud my body collapsing on the rough, arid terrain. My ankles and shins prick with pain, but I know I must get up. Hearing boots scuffing through the dirt underfoot towards me, I push up with my arms and onto my stinging ankles, run again as fast as my body will allow. My lungs are alight as every breath sears through them. Footsteps are following close behind, matching every step. As I continue on, body ablaze with throbbing pain, I hear a car engine rumble. I say a silent prayer and hope that one of them didn't bring their car to the party. I realise this car is on the main road beside me, headlights on full beam and someone honks their horn. 
The noise of it breaks through the panic clouding my mind and I look over. It's slowing down a few metres ahead. I weigh up my options. Get trampled by a mob of very upset fairground memes or try my luck. There has got to be some luck left for me this evening. I change course and pinwheel down the slight hill to the road. Every step sends a stab of wild discomfort up my legs. As I get closer, a truck comes into view, much more clearly. It's rusted and the worn paint on the side looks blue, but I can't tell for sure in this light. I reach for the handle of the door as someone from the inside pops it open for me. Jumping in and locking it immediately, I slowly turn my head towards the driver's seat and an old man looks back at me expectantly. He says, Liza? A silence hung in the air between us and the cab, uncomfortably. Adrenaline pumped through me second by second as I looked towards him fearfully. I can feel my captors getting closer as he releases the handbrake and the truck fires up. How does he know my name? I wonder, as he forces the truck back along the winding road towards the city, at full pelt. I cough as the ash and smoke from the fire return to haunt my lungs. The man reaches into the glove compartment and hands me a small handkerchief. I press it to my mouth and thank him in a croaky voice. Although my full name is Elizabeth, most people I knew call me Liza, a name I was, no thanks to my mother and father, much more comfortable with. I thought you would never come back, he says, eyes teary. As I looked at him, hoping he wasn't associated with the cretins I just got away from, a tear rolled down his cheek and fell on a pair of overalls caked in mud and oil and directed me to a name embroidered on them. Nick. I didn't have time to process this situation properly and said, Nick, I'm so glad to see you. Although not a lie, I suspected I was not the same Liza this man was looking for. I stroked the soft handkerchief in my hand. It comforted me to no end in this moment. Shaking, I finally let out a small sigh of relief. We need to go to the doctor's, Liza. The doctor will help us. Don't worry now. Hoping this meant hospital, I smiled when he looked over at me. After driving for a little, we entered city limits and I knew we were on the road to my local A&E. The last time I came here, I had fallen down the wooden stairs in our house and had to get stitches on my chin. I expected this time I'd have a lot more explaining to do. We pulled up to the entrance and Nick got out and wobbled over to my side, opening the door for me. When I got out, I looked down at my ankles. They were black and blue and swelling to a size only seen during pregnancy. Nick looked down at them too and huffed. <sighs> Bright mess you're in this time. He placed his arm around my waist and wore my other like a scarf as he helped me through the door. Come on. The effervescent lights reamed my eyes and I clung on a little tighter to Nick as I took a second to adjust. A young doctor, previously reading a screen behind the reception desk, looked up at me in horror. Nick, he shouted. He was tall, slim, with dark hair and dark eyes. He hastened over to us as we stood together in the doorway. The doctor grabbed me and lifted me onto a free bed in the hallway and him and Nick pushed me into a free cubicle. A nurse came to join us and looked down at me, horrified. I must be a state. Call the police, the doctor directed, and I looked motionless at the ceiling as my limbs sunk into the bed. Where did you find her? He asked Nick hesitantly. Nick looked up at him, dwarfed by the doctor's height and build. Nick was trying to say something, but the words wouldn't come out. He stammered, At, uh, at the, oh. The doctor placed his hand patiently on Nick's shoulder and told him it was all right. 
Nick wandered away out of my sight and I searched for him past the curtain which was blocking my view. The doctor turned to me and began to perform checks on my eyes, mouth and chest. What happened? I asked. Meaning, where did Nick go? The doctor looked down into my eyes deliberately and said, You're the third woman he's brought here this week. I let my gaze return motionless to the ceiling and knew that I was not the first, I would not be the last, and I definitely didn't like Valentine's Day. Hey guys, so if you're still here, thank you so, so much for watching. Um, I really hope you enjoyed this story. It's a little bit different to my usual ones. Um, but if you didn't like it, then come back next weekend and we'll see what's on offer then. So have a lovely night, guys. Thank you so much for watching and like and subscribe if you enjoyed it and want to see more. Have a lovely night. Bye.